I'm not moving the pork. It's just so much easier to have him to the left side of me because I have to move him for my streams anyway. So I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna put him back there. So you can just see the shit that I throw behind my chair. I don't really care. If you missed my last video, I kind of dyed my hair. I didn't really dye my hair. It's more of like a temporary thing, but I guess it's still dying. But now my hair has a rose gold tint to it. If you guys want to know more, watch that video. I felt like an actual YouTuber would be like, go, are you kidding? Juju jet plane, what is it called? JJ the jet plane, Juju. And goodbye son, I love this video already. I'm gonna try not to fuck around this video. I'm gonna try to get to the point because I feel like I have a lot to talk about. I told you guys I would film one more Ouija board video where I sit down and I talk about your guys' comments. And I also wanted to take all of the evidence I have, not even just from living in Texas over the past couple weeks, everything that I've experienced in my old house up until I moved to Texas, up until the last couple weeks. So I actually have a list that I left over there. I'll be right back. So I made a list and I tried to keep it in chronological order, but I, I have a really bad memory and I'm trying my best to remember everything. I went through a bunch of my old videos and I tried to remember the different occurrences that have happened. So I'm gonna do my best in this video. If I forget something, please let me know or comment it down below. I'm um, something that I missed that I've talked about in other videos, obviously. And honestly, I don't really have that much to say about your guys' comments on my last video, which was us burying the board. Most of you guys were incredibly supportive, which is so, shocking to me and I'm, I don't really know why. There was one video that I uploaded recently called The Spirit of My Apartment is Lying to Me and that video got a lot of traffic from people who aren't subscribed to my channel, people who don't know me, people who don't know the story behind T. And that video got so much hate and I'm not really sure why because the video out of context sure it doesn't make sense but like most of the comments were just people saying that I'm on drugs or I have ADHD because I ramble a lot. So just everything that I got from that video, I just assumed, I guess, that my next Ouija board video, I would get just as much hate, which I don't know why, because I know that I have you guys. And I know I have my core audience, my people who know me and my people who know my story. And I don't know why I expected to get all of this hate from that video. So it was really relieving for all of you guys to be really supportive and all of you guys to just, I don't know, tell me that we made the right decision and that you're happy that we're safe and all that stuff. A lot of people were asking if we regret the decision that we've made and honestly the only reason I would regret it is because we never really got to find out what exactly was happening or who exactly was attached to my board. It's been a few weeks honestly since we got rid of the board and I'm filming this. I, th I feel like more refreshed right now and this is why I wanted the video to be like delayed almost like I didn't want to sit down and talk about it while we were burying the board because we were so just like mentally drained at that point and wanted it to be over and I wanted time to kind of collect my thoughts and be able to sit down and actually discuss it with you guys and not be like fuck this so it's been a few weeks and I I feel fine nothing has happened like at all and honestly it's like almost like a weight was lifted off my shoulders, just getting rid of the board and not having to worry about anything anymore. And I don't know if everything that was happening was bad or if whoever we were speaking to was malicious, but honestly, I don't have to worry about it anymore. I don't have to question it anymore, which is really nice because I mean, I've been questioning myself for the last two years about all of this stuff. So thank you to everybody who was supportive of us, which is most of the people on that video, honestly. That video did insane, which I wasn't expecting it to. I figured most people would be like, I don't wanna watch this because it's really sad or people wouldn't give a shit because it's literally just us getting rid of the board. But like I say in the video, I want you guys to be as involved as possible because I know you guys have come along with us throughout the past two years and I wanted you guys to see everything, even if it was just us in a field burying the board. I actually saw a lot of comments saying that we didn't bury it deep enough or they didn't think that we did. Right when I cut, that's when I got down and I started helping Kayla. I was digging with my hands because I, we, okay, we bought like the tiniest little shovel because we didn't want to spend like 20 bucks on a shovel. So we got this tiny little hand shovel and we just, I don't know, we assumed it would work, but it really didn't. The sun is going to come in and out. I'm so sorry, but it didn't really work. So I had to get down on my hands and knees and dig with my hands just to get this shit buried. And I would bury the planchette deep as well. And um, a lot of you guys were also saying the coin to bury the coin. I threw the coin out like I don't have it anymore. We forgot to bury it. We forgot to grab it when we left, but I did get rid of it as well. I don't have it anymore. Somebody else commented and they were like, they told you to bury it where nobody can find it yet. You're filming the location, but that field is so huge. You guys, it's just like this massive field forest area. How would you find the one spot that we put it, honestly? I mean, I don't know. You guys are FBI agents, so I have no idea. Maybe you will find it someday, but please don't. If anybody finds it, don't fuck with it, please. I'm hoping that if somebody does, they just know to leave it and not do anything with it. But I mean, really, that's all I have to say about it. You guys are awesome on that video, and it's so nice to have your guys' support and just to know that we did do the right thing. And I was actually shocked because I thought a lot of people would be like, oh no, you should have burnt it, or you should have done this or that, but a lot of you guys were like, oh no, you did the right thing. And I haven't spoken to the medium. She hasn't contacted contacted me. I haven't contacted her because I haven't really felt like I needed to. I mean, nothing's happened. I still have rosemary burning pretty much 24 seven because it's supposed to bring positive energy. And I had the diffuser anyway. So I was like, okay, I'm just going to keep burning it and burning it.
burning it and burning it. I just hope that more positive energy comes in. I don't fucking know. But I mean, you guys, it's like, it's hard to explain the feeling in the room, but it's so much different than it was before. It's one of the things that I just feel like it doesn't even make sense to anybody unless you're in the situation. Like before, it wasn't necessarily heavy and it never really felt evil, but it did feel like there was somebody in the room with you. And I just, I don't feel like that anymore. Like I feel like I'm alone right now, which is so weird because I haven't felt like this in a very long time. Like I don't feel like anybody's listening to what I'm saying and I don't feel the need to like talk to them as if they're part of all of this anymore. Like they're not, like they're gone. and. That's the weirdest thing to me, but okay, we're gonna get into all of the evidence because I feel like that's like the coolest part about all of this. I've had so much stuff happen to me just throughout the span of my life and I'm really excited to have all of it in one place now versus like all over my channel because it's really hard to find. So I have my list of everything that's happened and honestly, I'm just gonna start from the very beginning. So if you guys have been here from the beginning or you've followed the story, you know that all of this started in Arizona at my mom's house. Me and my siblings were really the only ones who ever experienced anything paranormal. My mom never really did and my dad never really did. They didn't even really believe us when we said these things happened. So the way that the house is laid out, it's like, my parents' room is on one side of the house and then there's this huge long hallway, this creepy fucking long hallway. And then it's like all of my siblings' rooms were right next to each other. And most of the activity was in the kitchen and a living room, which was by all of us. I'm gonna summarize the things that would happen in the house because I don't really wanna spend too much time on this. I already have a video about this. I'll link it down below. It's a horrible video, but I already made it. So I'm just gonna link it anyways. For the most part, it was just a lot of footsteps and running throughout the hallways. Um, there were a lot of cabinets opening and shutting, stuff like that. Me and my brother have both heard running down the hallway up to our door. So my brother's room is like over here mine's over here so like on complete opposite sides of like the kitchen living room area and so we've both heard this running throughout the hallway and it just stops at your door and it just goes away like it's just like somebody ran up to your door and then it's gone and we've also heard cabinets opening and shutting in the kitchen i mean all the time you guys and we would go and check to see if anybody was in the kitchen and there would never be anybody there and they would typically be closed i think i only came out one time when they were still left open which was so weird i even have texts from my brother that were like can you please come home because i'm hearing cabinets shutting and closing and i'm freaking the fuck out he also oh my gosh he also told me this one time he heard the running up to his door and then all of a sudden he heard loud whispers i think you guys understand what i mean when i say loud whispers because i know that doesn't really make sense but he said it sounded like people were having a conversation in the living room like multiple people but he couldn't make out what they were saying and it was just like these loud whispers and then it just all stops and that's like ugh, I, I've never experienced that specifically but I mean I know exactly what he's talking about and it's just like uh, like we've had so much stuff happen in that house. I also told a story and I'm gonna just tell it really quickly because it's probably one of the scariest stories that I have from that house. But I was in my bedroom and me and my sister had a Jack and Jill bathroom so they were connected and my sister wasn't home but I could hear something in her room so I was like, okay, maybe she got home or maybe she came home early. I don't know, I think she was at a friend's house. And so I was walking through the bathroom to her bedroom and I heard something in my closet fall. So I get over to her room, I notice she isn't actually there and then I walk back and this box falls down. And so I open my closet and I was like, oh, she so I put it back up because I didn't really think anything of it and then all of a sudden I hear oh my god I hate this because I can still hear it and then I hear this jingling sound so I used to do competitive dance so I just had this competition jacket that I would have to wear and it had a bunch of pins on it and I could hear it rattling and I mean you'd have to shake it really hard for you to hear like the pins rattling on it and so I got really scared and so I ran into my living room and I was like okay I'm just gonna sit out here and I'm gonna watch TV so I had this movie on and I even called one of my friends and I was like please just talk to me for a little bit I was like I'm really freaking out right now and so eventually I like got up and I was like, okay, I'm gonna go to the bathroom down this hallway, I'm not going into my bathroom. So I hung up the phone with her, I went to the bathroom and I came back and I laid back down on the couch, not on the phone anymore. I was just watching this movie and all of a sudden I hear the loudest, ugh, I wanna recreate it, but I don't know if I'm gonna be able to. I heard the loudest smack on my counter, like my granite counter, and it was like, it sounded a little bit different than that, you know what I mean, this is wood, but same thing. So I heard the loudest smack and it was like, not the house creaking, it was nothing like that. And so I literally <laughs> sprinted to my parents' room, bawling my eyes out because I was so scared. It was so loud, you guys. And it was so similar to the sound that I heard on my stream the other day or a few weeks ago, not the other day. Actually, I think that happened like two weeks ago when I'm filming this, holy shit. It feels so much longer than that, I don't know why, but it sounded almost identical. And I feel like that's why I got really panicked because I was like, oh my God, this has happened before. But I'll talk about that later because I wanna try to keep this in order. So I mean, those are pretty much all the experiences I had before using the board, before even trying to contact anything in my house. That was the shit that would happen. And so Kayla and I decided to use the board on Halloween. That was the first time we ever used it and we fucked up so much. And I'm not even gonna get into that 
because I know it was an awful video. I know we did everything wrong, but that's okay. We learned our lesson. So at the end of that session, you guys know she told us to run. And so we ended the session, we were freaked the fuck out. But after that, I started to see more things. I remember this so vividly, you guys. I was going outside because I was gonna film a video. It was just really nice outside. I don't know why I was going out there to film. So I had my camera and my tripod set up just on this table we had out there next to like our grill and shit. And I was getting up to grab something, I believe. Like I was like, oh, I forgot this inside, whatever. Like, probably, probably my fucking Diet Coke. And so I get up and I look towards my house and in my kitchen window, I just see this face in the window like this person standing at the window and I was home alone and so I look at it and I look away and I did a double take because I was like holy shit who's in my house and when I look back there's nothing there so I booked it into my house because I was like who the fuck was that I'm not really sure why I would run into the house just in case it was an intruder or something like that but I was like oh my god I, I didn't know what it was so I sprinted into the house and there was nobody there and there was also this one time I was in my closet because I was doing laundry and I was just standing there putting stuff away behind me I could see this black shadow it was just this person standing behind me and I could see it out of the corner of my eye so clearly this person standing there and I was so scared to turn around because I could I could see it like it was right there and eventually I did I turned around and it was gone like it just disappeared out of thin fucking air and those are the experiences you try to tell yourself they didn't happen or you try to create some logical explanation like I'm just over thinking it or maybe I didn't really see anything but at the same time there are these scenarios where I'm not even thinking about the paranormal I'm not thinking about my house being haunted I'm doing laundry I'm about to film a fucking video and then I see these things like I'm not in this state where I'm like scared or panicking because I'm thinking about the Ouija board or stuff like that they're just random moments that these happen and holy shit I don't even know if you guys remember this but during one of my Ouija board sessions at the very beginning I saw a shadow person walk by the window in front of Kayla and I and you can see the way that I look up and I look out at the window and I'm following following them with my eyes. Oh my god, I remember editing that footage and I was like, oh my, I remember I just saw the shadow walk right by the window and right after they walked by, the board started moving. It was, oh my god, it's the weirdest shit. I completely forgot that that happened too and I was going through my old videos and I was like, all of the stuff that's happened, I can't even comprehend it. I think that's the main reason I wanted to put all of it in one video because if you look at all of the videos, okay, yeah, there's a lot of shit that's gone down, but trying to put all of it together in one place, oh my god, it's just, it's, I keep saying it's crazy and I keep saying it's insane, but I, I really don't have any other way to describe it. After that happened, I don't think we really had any more paranormal experiences other than the stuff that was normal for us. And I use the word normal very loosely here. So the cabinet shutting, the walking and running down the hallway, that kind of stuff. And then I moved to Texas. And this is when the board stops working for me. And it doesn't work for, I mean, most of the first couple of months that I live here, uh, probably the first like six months that I live here, I can't get the board to work for the life of me. The only time I ever really used a Ouija board was at the Goatman Bridge, but I wasn't using my own board. But Morgan and I did have the experience at White Rock Lake where my camera flew over, like my whole tripod flew over to the side, like it threw my camera. And then it also flipped over the box that all of our stuff was sitting on. So we had the Ouija board and then we had the box that it comes in and we had all of our keys, our phones, everything on this thing. And it just completely flipped up and flew away. Like all of our shit went flying everywhere. We had to go search for half of it. And we asked T or whoever it was if somebody was angry and they threw everything and they said yes which I mean if you watch the footage back too it's really windy but it's windy the whole time and my camera will shake every once in a while because it's windy but never at any point does it fly over and it gets windier throughout the night so for it to fly over at the beginning like that it just didn't really make sense and then for all of our stuff to just go flying everywhere oh my god it yeeted it so then we fast forward to the recent events when Kayla was here and we're able to use the board again I don't want to spend too much time talking about this because it all is is really recent but I want to put all of the evidence and the footage I have in this video so we're going to do that all of it just started with me seeing shadows so there was one time I was in the bathroom I was looking in the mirror and I saw a shadow in my bedroom and I could see it in the mirror and it just went by so quickly and I whipped around and there was nothing in my bedroom and then there was the one time I was cleaning my fridge and I was singing really loudly and I saw somebody walk across like okay I've showed you guys before but I'm gonna show you again really quick I have that little hole right there like from my kitchen to my living room and I saw somebody walk right past it like while I was singing really loudly and I was kind of scared because I was like, oh my God, who's here? Who'd listen to that shit? I mean, long story short, I would just see shadows all the time, just out of the corner of my eye. And then my blind started to move. And this is something I really want to talk about this. And I'm going to try to keep it very minimal. I feel like you have a lot of space over there. I'm going to try to keep this very minimal, but I do want to defend myself with the blinds because a lot of people seem to think that it's just the wind. We're going to talk about that for a second. But my blind started to move. And the first time they moved, I was here by myself. And in the video, you can see, it looks like somebody's almost dragging their hand across the blinds. Like they're walking back and forth dragging their hands across it and I did not have my fan on I did not have my air conditioning on and I don't even believe that it was windy outside and I even checked not the next day but I checked when it started happening again with my blinds if there was any airflow coming through my door and there's 
nothing. And I checked on a night where it was incredibly windy, so if there was any sort of airflow or any sort of crack, I would have felt it. And so it was just strange because it's never happened before, not even with my air on, not even with my fan on. I've never seen it move in that way before, and it was loud. Like I could hear the blinds moving, and for it to be hitting that harshly, like I just feel like there's no actual explanation for that, especially when I don't have my fan or my air on. The second time it was happening, I did have my fan on and I did have my air on and I was very upfront about that. I was very honest with that. I said that at the beginning of the video because a lot of people were like, um, your fan's on. And I was like, yeah, I know. I said that. So the first time it happened, my blinds were closed so that you could see all of them. The second time my blinds were open and pushed to one side. And that's when they started doing the clapping thing. And they were clapping just in one specific spot. And it was so loud that it startled Paige and I when it first started happening. And again, we went over there and we checked to see if there was any airflow because it was just in one specific spot. It didn't really make sense the way that it was moving. And again, it's never happened before and it hasn't happened since. Neither of them have happened since. Any sort of movement with my blinds. When I have my air on, obviously they're gonna move a little bit, but it's not the same way by any means. And you never hear them moving. Like you never hear that like bang, like the blinds hitting each other. And I mean, when that was happening the second time, we were sitting there trying to figure it out for over an hour, trying to see if there was any crack, any airflow, what was happening. The wasp is back. I have a wasp nest now on my deck and I'm so upset because I don't know how to get rid of it. I know I can call maintenance, but I'm lazy and I always forget, so whatever. So we have the two incidences with the blinds and actually I think they moved once when it was just Paige. I was in my bathroom so I didn't see it, but they clapped just one time and then went completely still when Paige was in the living room. So three incidents with the blinds. And then I think one of the scariest pieces of evidence that I have throughout this whole thing are the two faces. And I talked about this in the last video. So again, I'm not going to talk about it much. I'll put the pictures right here so you can see them. But basically the first one is from the spirit in my apartment is lying to me when I'm videotaping the blinds that are clapping. And the second one was taken from my stream when we heard that loud bang, which is so... I didn't know it was from the same stream, and when I found that out, it made me feel so much worse. I talked about the bang in my last video as well, but I'll put the clip right here so you guys can see it again. I hate this stupid game. I hate this stupid game. Basically, I was playing Slenderman, I was playing a scary game, and I was already really on edge, and then I heard that same loud bang that I was talking about earlier in my video, how it happened at my old house as well. I heard that really loud bang, and then somebody found that face in the video, and that was pretty much the end of it for me. I was like, I'm, I'm done with this shit. And that's pretty much where it wraps up. So we buried the board, and we did everything that the medium told us to do, and so far, so good. A lot of you guys were saying that you don't think this is over, and that it's just beginning, that kind of stuff, but I honestly do believe that it is over. This isn't really something that I want to keep bringing up on my channel. It was really cool. Like the whole experience was really cool and the concept, like I've said a million times about tea, just the idea of having this spirit friend but the reality of it is we don't know who we were talking to and you never really know who you're going to contact using a Ouija board. So I just want you guys to be careful and want you guys to be safe if you guys do end up using it. I want to sit here and tell you guys not to do it and to learn from my mistakes, but I can't control your guys' actions. Somebody could tell you a million times not to do something, but if you want to do it, I know you're going to do it anyways. So I just want you guys to be careful and be safe. I'm going to tell you don't use it and don't do it and don't even risk it. But at the end of the day, if you're going to do it anyways, please just be smart about it. I really don't think that I'll ever make a video about this unless something does happen or maybe I'm looking back on it like in a couple years I have no idea I just don't really have anything else to say I feel like we've gone over everything a million times and hopefully there's nothing else that happens but I hope you guys enjoyed thank you guys so much for coming along this whole journey with me it's been insane it's been scary it's been exciting it's been everything they could possibly think of it's like a fucking movie honestly all of this is so unreal to me and half the time I talk about it I'm like I sound insane but it was a really cool experience. As much as I want to say I wish I'd never did it, I'm kind of glad I did because I got to learn a lot from it and I got all of you guys from it, which is like, I don't know, I feel like that makes it worth it on its own. But we're gonna wrap it up here. So goodbye tea, goodbye Ouija boards, goodbye all of this fun stuff. I'll still have paranormal videos, obviously. I'm still gonna upload your guys' stories. I still want to talk about this stuff, but maybe not my own experiences, maybe not tea, maybe not that kind of stuff, but I still love the paranormal and I still love scary stories and I'm never going to stop that or, okay, I shouldn't say never, but like as for right now, I don't wanna stop and I have no plans on stopping any of that. So don't worry you guys, I'm still gonna have this whole scary paranormal channel, I promise that's not changing, but my experiences are gone. They're not in this anymore. But again, I hope you guys enjoyed and I will see you guys in the next one. Bye. That's just not really how it works, I guess.